Have a seat. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, I was never not going to be myself. Merrily, merrily. Okay, you're not singing. Sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Yeah. Try not to suck today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, here's Jason. Thank you, everybody. Welcome. Welcome for a big chunk of you that have been with us. I can say welcome to our ninth season premiere. Nine years. And for the rest of you, you're wondering, who the hell am I? That's right. We have a lot of new cities. My name is Jace. I'm 49. I like Dallas, the show, and the city. I like Knott's Landing. I like Disney World. I love dogs. I love you. I love television. Well, most of you, but I mean, yeah. And I love a new start and a new beginning, and that's what's happening right now. So we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Leo, roll the open. Let's do it, everybody. Nine years. Okay, now we weren't sure this was going to happen. Whoa. We weren't sure uh, that I was going to be able to say this, but I can. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my sidekick sister. Welcome, Kendall Mark, everybody. Hello. <laughs> now, here. <laughs> To all of you it. new folks in Cedar Rapids and Sioux City and Chicago and Orlando and Madison, if you're wondering what I mean, she's pregnant. Very she's pregnant. She's very, very pregnant. Very. Um, you could literally, this is not a joke. No. Nope. You could give birth at any moment. Yep. Right? Yep. So uh, <laughs> let's take a shot, Leo. We have some birthing nurses in the audience right oh, now. Oh, thank God. These are the, that <laughs> row right there. Right there. <laughs> now. Yeah. If any, if, if, if Kendall goes into labor, it's up to you right there, okay? No pressure. That's right. Whether they're licensed or not, so. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. How you feeling, love? I feel like I'm 40 weeks pregnant, but hey, we're ready. <laughs> you look, audience, doesn't she look beautiful? Oh. She looks so good. I do waddle. I, I've been... Again, for the new folks, Kendall and I are like brother and sister, mm -hmm. so we give each other crap. I kept texting her over the weekend, have you birthed yet? Yeah. Uh, you know, we need you for the season premiere. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Me too, waddling away. That's I'm, right. I'm here. I love you. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. We, we like to say our show isn't like a typical daytime show. Like, we do have some lifestyle stuff, but we're really, my inspirations for television are Letterman and, and Johnny Carson, so you kind of get a sense of that. So we thought this would be fun. We wanted to kick off our ninth season in a really big way. <laughs> so we had an idea. So then we did this. So, but, but we couldn't do our big idea, so we did this. Oprah, Oprah Winfrey turned us down, so we did this. We thought, let's have a mascot race. So, uh, you know, like they do, the audience is stunned silent. <laughs> They're like, what the hell is this? You know, like they do at baseball games. So, uh, Jason show play-by-play -play guy Pierre is outside our student, uh, our studio, with the contestants. <laughs> Pierre, um, Pierre, the excite, forget the, forget the Vikings home opener. The excitement is building in our very own parking lot, isn't it? <laughs> It, it absolutely is, Jason. And first and foremost, I got to tell everybody that uh, only Jason can get me out of bed before 11 a.m. So congratulations! <laughs> to you. And, uh, you know, I've 
covered Super Bowls, I've covered the NBA Finals, I've covered the Stanley Cup Final, but I don't think anything could prepare me for what we are about to see in the Fox 9 parking lot because we've got unicorns here who are about to stage a race coming up later in the show. We've got Priscilla, Anastasia, and, and we've also got Bjornicorn here, ready to rock That's and roll. Right. And I have to tell you, my That's sources right. tell me that Anastasia is having a little bit of uh, neck pain early this morning. So hopefully Anastasia over here can make it through because it's going to be a mad dash to the finish. That's and right. I, for one, cannot wait to see what happens, Jason. Pierre, uh, Pierre, look at the amount of cameras we have on this crap. We have you. We have a, we, we have a military drone in the air. Look, Pierre, look up and wave to the drone, Pierre. Yes. We are a well-oiled machine. I mean, we're on in, what, every major city in the country now at this yeah. point? So, I mean, we have to come prepared, don't we? That's right. Again, we pull out all the stops. We couldn't get Oprah, so we thought, why not put Fox employees in mascot outfits? Yeah. We'll be checking in with Pierre a little bit later. <laughs> Welcome to our show, everyone. <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> yeah. and, and Leo, Leo, take five. Just so you knew, just so you know, I had to give each of those employees a $50 Golden Corral gift card to get them to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Every day, uh, audience, you don't get them. I'm sorry. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'll give you something else. Fresh out. Okay, every day we break down the biggest stories. Ladies and gentlemen, we call it the hot dish. Roll it, Leo. Here we go. In Minnesota, we call casseroles hot dish, if you don't know. Well, with the Hollywood strikes uh, showing no signs of ending anytime soon, one talk show was taking a stand. This surprised the heck out of me. Drew Barrymore announced yesterday that she's coming back for her fourth season starting next week. Drew shared a post on Instagram saying she owns, it's very long, I'm not going to read the whole thing, we only have like 20 minutes. Anyway, she says she owns the decision and that the show will be in full compliance with the strike. The news is, as I said, kind of a surprise because last spring Drew walked away from hosting the MTV Film and TV Awards to show solidarity with striking writers. Her talk show was already done for the season when the strike started. So despite saying she will be in full compliance, the Writers Guild has a different story. They say she's violating strike rules by starting the show and they plan to pick it outside of her studio next week. <laughs> this is a little, you know, it's very nuanced. I. I all of the headlines screaming at her. I get it, but I just want to add a little bit of context. I, I I can imagine this was a tough decision for her. No, but uh, Drew Barrymore's a good person. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she, she's getting a lot of I'm pulling back the curtain here. I'm sure she's getting a lot of pressure, and I'm not making excuses. I'm just adding some context. I'm sure she's getting a lot of pressure from the people that own the show, CBS. Mm -hmm. I'm sure she feels for her crew that aren't in the union, uh, their livelihoods depend on it. I want to be Crystal Carrington clear. I'm, I'm, I'm not sticking up for her. I'm just saying I can imagine this would be and was a very tough decision for her to do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, and I don't know the intricacies of all of this, but I know that the Writers Union did sign something for soap operas, game, the reason we can watch game shows and stuff. They all have a different contract than the ones that do the big TV shows. So they're kind of saying, well, we sort of can fall under this category yeah. where things are okay still. We just won't have stars come on and talk about their movies. We'll be respectful of all that absolutely so. and if you're wondering like we you know the reason we are on we're not a union place and executive producer Jeff I mean our photographers are but executive producer Jeff is doing 18 jobs yeah. so right now so it, yeah he's doing everything <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a unicorn. I, I, yeah, yeah, at least at least Jeff isn't dressed up like a unicorn in our parking lot right now. Yeah. Is that why we can't hire a new Ted? That's why we can't hire oh. because we force people to dress up like unicorns. That's, That's right. Okay. Our, up next, uh, lots of talk about an upcoming superhero movie this weekend, and the talk isn't good. It definitely calls for. Oh no, she didn't. That's right. Our drama horn. Well. Social media it was buzzing about the fact that we haven't seen any promotion for the upcoming Aquaman sequel. Some speculated that Warner Brothers, who owns it, 
was trying to bury it because it's bad. And they don't want to waste money promoting a bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they do that with our show. They just don't, they don't, they don't. Why run commercials? I mean, I mean, let's keep it a secret. Remember, they already lost some big, big bucks on the flash over the summer. But hours after these rumors started circulating online, Imagine this! <laughs> Warner Brothers released a teaser, but it's not a real teaser, y'all. It's a teaser for a trailer. Watch. <laughs> I'm going to kill Aquaman and destroy everything he holds dear. Kingdom. So again, that was a teaser for the teaser that comes out on Thursday. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Full trailer. I'm sorry. I don't need Warner Brothers mad at me. It's the full trailer. Mm -hmm. One person missing from the teaser is Amber Heard, who co-stars in the sequel. E. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. Don't need that drama. No. <laughs> Warner, poor, I mean, I'm not saying poor Warner Brothers, but DC. Poor Warner no, Brothers. No, but D, D, <laughs> DC. DC comic books movie, uh, DC comic movies cannot catch a break. Uh -uh. They cannot have another bomb on their hands, no. or they are going to shut that down and turn it into a gymboree. I mean, I'm not kidding. They're just going to shut it down, turn it into a Payless shoe shorts. Uh -huh. Shoe shorts? Shoe shorts. <laughs> Shelly, you got shoe shorts Cindy, shoe Cindy Brady, eight minutes into the damn show. Anyway. Hope you like us, new cities. That's right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> No, I'm not. Birth check. Do we need to activate row one? Or are you no. good? We're good. Thank you. Stay We're seated. good. Okay. Stay seated. We're going to take a break. <laughs> Much more in our night season premiere when we return. Back in a moment. <laughs> Scots are warming up, everyone. Look at them. Don't miss the epic battle coming up here in just a little bit. I don't know, audience, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going with the pink unicorn. I don't know about you guys. I'm going, no? No, no? Oh, that's the Bjornicorn. Some people think the black's going to take it all. I don't know. We'll see in a little bit. Oh, God, I'm going to owe them so much, I'm telling you. Speaking of weird costumes, the Masked Singer returned last night. Uh, sort of. Sort of. Uh, it was a kickoff to the 10th season, which officially begins in a few weeks. Last night's kickoff special featured one mystery celebrity who, look, you got to give the show credit where credit's due. It brought the house down. Look at this. What about Yeah, well, I just ruined it for row one of our audience, but that's all right. Yeah. I'll get her a Golden Corral gift card, too, but yeah. Sorry. So, spoiler uh, there. Sorry, ma'am. Uh, uh, superstar Demi Lovato was the anonymous... Um, anonymous. Yeah. Well, the reason she was on it, hello... She has a new album coming out this week. Uh, she's out promoting stuff. She was on Howard Stern today. Hi, Howard. Baba Booey to you. And uh, <laughs> welcome back from vacation. I missed you. And because normally I'm not throwing shade. But. 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 <laughs> no. Hey, it's my network. But I'm saying normally I'm the mass singer. You get like 
Not Demi Lovato. Thank you for saying that, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you said it, because they're not going to yell at a pregnant woman. No, so, he's yeah. going to yell at me, no. Exactly. Mm -hmm. More diss for you now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thank you. More diss for you now. A power uh, couple in Hollywood is facing some big backlash. Oh. Joining us live from Hollywood with that story and more is our good friend Brad from TMZ. Give it up, audience. Happy Hi, season nine, Jason. Good morning. How you doing, Brad? Good. Happy season nine. Thank you. I appreciate it, buddy. Well, let's get this out of the way. Ashton Kutcher and Mila uh, doing major damage control after they after it was revealed they sent a letter of support for Danny Masterson. What's the latest? They sure did. So Danny Masterson was their That 70s Show co-star. And last week, uh, Jason, he was sentenced 30 years to life uh, on a rape conviction here in Los Angeles. A lot of times when the sentencing, ha when sentencing happens, uh, the accused uh, kind of asks friends for support for letters to send to the judge to kind of speak about their character. Uh, now, two of the people that Danny Masterson had write letters were Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Uh, and those letters are made public, so they are facing a lot of backlash. What you're seeing there is the apology video they made over the weekend explaining, look, we weren't trying to take away from Danny's uh, accusers or, or trying to, uh, to, to lessen the sentence that he was given. This was simply a letter that we sent to the judge speaking of our experience with him and his character, but uh, it's falling on deaf ears. They're taking a lot of heat for this. Yeah, you know, two things. They could have just politely declined that request. Yep. And number two, if you're going to do an apology video, uh, don't do it via a teleprompter and look, you know, stilted, you know. It Right? It, 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 it was very bizarre the way they did it. And, and look, like you said, this was a retrial. I mean, it was known the evidence of, against him was pretty strong, and, and they could have declined, yep. you know, to write this letter. Let's, uh, let's get to some happy stuff. Happy news for a longtime bachelor, uh, Captain America himself, Chris Evans. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, I don't know about your Twitter feed, Jason, but there's a lot of people upset on mine that uh, Chris Evans <laughs> is no longer si uh, single. Uh, there was a report over the weekend, I know, I know, there was a report over the weekend that uh, Captain America, he got hitched to actress Alba Baptista in, uh, in their home in Boston there. Now, they've only been dating maybe three years, at least that we know of. Uh, but this was a very private ceremony. Guests supposedly had to uh, give up their cell phones. They had to sign NDAs, big time celebrities there, including some of his Avengers co-stars, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, Chris Pratt was there as well. Uh, so quite a little ceremony there for, uh, for one of the biggest movie stars that we've got right now. Good for him. Yeah, good guy. Awesome. A good, one of the good ones. He is. Brad, have a great weekend. Thanks for being here, buddy. Thanks, Jason. You too. More of these stories at TMZ.com or TMZ on TV. Check your local listings. No. Every time I think about Chris Evans, I'll, I'll make this quick. I have a friend, a single friend, mm -hmm. who was on a dating app. Yeah. And she got, I don't know what the terminology, I haven't been single since Obama was president. But anyway, <laughs> I, uh, uh, she got a DM from a guy mm -hmm. who claimed to be Chris Pratt. Or Chris, Chris, Evans? Chris Evans. Oh Lord! And she goes, "I'm Captain. He's I'm Cap. I was in Captain America." And then she was like, "Really?" And he goes, "Yeah." By the way, can you send me thirty uh, Amazon gift cards? And I said to her, <laughs> "I doubt Captain America would ask you for Amazon gift cards." Just right. saying. Mm -hmm. More just for you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Please. I think I think Chris Evans can afford his own Amazon <laughs> gift cards. More just for you now. Get ready for some big changes to my second home. Hi, Orlando, also known as Walt Disney World. Destination D23 happened this weekend in one of our new cities, Orlando. D23, if you don't know, is the official Disney fan club in the Mouse House. Dropped some big news about some updates coming to the parks. Let's start with Animal Kingdom. You're looking at an artist concept. Disney is creating a tropical America kind of land to replace Dino Land. USA. Yeah, this is cool. I'm really happy about this. Reports are it's going to focus on Central and South America with rides or some attractions uh, focused on Encanto and Indiana Jones. Ooh. You're looking at Test Track right there at Epcot. Let's move to Magic Kingdom. They're calling this right now. It's going to be the largest expansion 
in Disney history at Magic Kingdom, and it will be taking place over uh, within the next several years. Uh, knowing Disney, they move a little slow. I would imagine within five years we'll get this. They're going to add on to the Magic Kingdom. One of the rumors, and even if you don't go to the parks, you'll love this because they need to do this idea a villain's land. Oh. oh, that's cool. A land focusing on all the Disney villains, which would be excellent. I want to see Cruella's place. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And Scar and anyway. Finally, Epcot. The ongoing renovations are expected to finally be finished by uh, most of them by Christmas this year. It's been going on for four years. They built the park in three and remodeled it in four. <laughs> I don't know who I don't know why that makes sense. The park is also getting a new nighttime spectacular or a fireworks show starting in uh, December, November uh, area. So a lot of this, these were announcements we expected. Mm -hmm. It's good news uh, for our folks in uh, Orlando. It's it's the Animal Kingdom thing. People love Encanto. Yeah. I, I think that's going to be a huge hit at Animal Kingdom. Was the Dino Land? I, I, you know, I've never been there. Um, was that not as big? It's been there for a while. It needed a refresh. Okay. It's 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 had its time. You done? Are uh, you done? Uh, we you know oh, keep extinct. it. Yeah. We're, we're done. We're done. It's, it had its fans. But now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, no. <laughs> these, uh, these usually happen during pro baseball games, but not anymore. Friends, it's time for the first ever Jason Show mascot race. That's right. <laughs> Joining us live. Joining us live about 50 yards away is our play-by-play -play man, Pierre, outside where the race is about to begin. Right, Pierre? Jason, that is absolutely correct. And uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity because this is no doubt the pinnacle of my sports broadcasting career. <laughs> and now, this is the moment we have all been waiting for. We've got Priscilla in the black, Anastasia in the pink, and Bjornicorn in the white. Let's not waste any more time, shall we? We are getting ready to rock and roll. They are on their marks. They are ready to go. They're going to start racing when I drop my hand like right now. And then there go. Yes, Priscilla, come on, audience. Anastasia, Bjornicorn. Wait. It is a foot race to the finish. Bjornicorn has blown the competition away. So much so they slice him. Wait a minute for the late charge by Anastasia here. And wait, Anastasia. Bjornicorn. Oh, my oh. goodness gracious. I thought he... Wait. Bjornicorn. An unbelievable race, Jason. What? Did they just run through crime tape? <laughs> well... You know, even though even though we are on season nine, our budget still needs to be at a season ten type level, so we had to make <laughs> sacrifices somewhere. So, uh, and but but an unbelievable race, Bjornicorn is our winner. Jason. That's right, Bjornicorn takes it. Bjorn, uh, Pierre, there wasn't really any doubt, right? From the beginning, he had the momentum, he had the audience behind him, right, Pierre? Yeah, Bjornicorn really got off to a great start out of the block. You really, that, the start, Jason, is really what matters. But, you know, he showboated a little bit toward the end. I thought Anastasia was going to have a chance to come and win it. But all's, uh, all's well that ends well uh, for Bjornicorn. Uh, Pierre, uh, you Pierre know, it, it can you ask Bjornicorn what's wrong with his head? It keeps flapping a little bit. Hey, hey, uh, Jason wants to know what's wrong with your head, Bjornicorn. It like, keeps, like, bobbing and weaving and bopping around. Like, I'm so tired. Uh, there no, he oh, is. Bjornicorn is exhausted, Jason. He's exhausted. From, a, from an intense race. Um, hey, Pierre, can I ask you something? When you, yes. were, when you were a little kid dreaming of being a sports broadcaster, mm -hmm. did you ever yeah. think this day would come for you? No, I really didn't. And that's why I have you to thank for finally giving me the opportunity that I've always that's right. dreamed of. But now I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my career at this point. <laughs> I, I've reached the top. Audience, give it up for our mascots, everybody. <laughs> well done, everybody. <laughs> Can I, I, I don't know how we, let's just, uh, we can't top it. Let's just ra wrap up the show right now. Oh, I, I got to tell you, we went around on Friday asking every employee in this building uh -huh. uh, if they would be willing to dress up in a mascot outfit. An inflatable unicorn uh, uh, And those are the th only three people that agreed to do it in our entire building. Yeah. <laughs> we got, we we got a variety of no's. We got normal no's. We got no's connected to a cuss word. Uh, we got no's connected with throwing things at me. So thanks to Amanda, thanks to Addie, and thanks to Bjornicorn uh, for having that off. We're going to take a break. We are just getting started. Go get some more coffee. We'll be right back, back in a moment.
continues next. On the fish out of water again when I go kayaking with executive producer Jeff down the Mississippi. Huckleberry Finn, we are not. Then, a little later, I'm unveiling my latest best thing ever, and it's an item that could help you look a little better in the morning. That and more when The Jason Show continues. Welcome back. Welcome back, everyone. Well, no matter what season it is, uh, my team loves to put me in unfamiliar situations just to see how I would react for your viewing pleasure. That's right, yeah. <laughs> well, that was especially true when I uh, told everyone that I was going kayaking on the Mississippi River. Yeah, never done that before. I've never kayaked. I've never done it. So, but instead of doing it alone, we thought, you know, let's turn to the most outdoorsy person we know to come with me, executive producer Jeff. It's our version of Oprah and Gail. Okay, without further ado, it's our latest fish out of water. It's the hottest damn day of the year. Wearing mime black. <laughs> Today, we're going to be going up a little bit and then come back down, and we're going to get against the current, so we have to have a good paddle stroke. So when we're reaching forward to the water, I'm going on my left side now, reach forward, grab water, pull it back with a good full paddle. Now, we want to turn left, backstroke on your left. You want to turn right, backstroke on your right. Okay. Yeah, the turning. Yeah, Eric says that you guys are kind of putsy. So. We are, I, I, Eric is right. So. Okay. Let's go get our life vest. We'll carry uh, the uh, kayaks down. We'll get into water and get the show on the road. Hold on, you forgot the most important rule. What? The river never returns its dead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there is a waterfall down there, so make sure you do paddle well, or you're going to be on the news in a special way. Talk show host Jason Matheson and, and generic other, male. And other, and other male. <laughs> With the generic outline yes. graphic. You can be really confident 70% of the people make it. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so you're going to be good. Okay, here we go. And I am pretty sure these are the kayaks that are without holes. Is there only, are there only two things or are there three? Oh, wait. Three, three what? Three is probably. There, there is three. Am I missing? Yeah, you there, are. You're, you're, yeah. You're, this one did not make the oh. uh, trip around. <laughs> Thank you. This is starting well. Off to the right. To the right, Jeff. Yeah, the other right. These are heavy. These are very heavy. I haven't eaten since March, and I'm still getting an extra, extra large. Do these life jackets make us look fat? The fat no, makes no. Look. Yeah. The chicken fingers make me look fat. Okay. Okay. Now. <laughs> Don't forget that. <laughs> oh, 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 and more. Just around the river bend. <laughs> at the river bend. At the river bend. Why do people like this? <laughs> you know what's better than this? What? Watching TV and air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's better than this? My mother-in-law driving a pontoon. <laughs> I'm sitting in the back. Oh, what's that? Are we on the right? How deep is this? I, you're asking me a lot of questions. <laughs> do I look like the kid from Up? <laughs> oh, look at the geese. These geese don't look nice. I don't like Canadian geese. Do you like American geese? Ha <laughs> ha! One time I had a geese uh, throw its poop on me. I had a Canadian goose hit my windshield when I had a Ford Focus. <laughs> Who won that battle? The Focus. <laughs> Well, I am a little worried because I gotta leave in like 20 minutes. We, we are limited on time in our kayaking adventure because Jeff has to go to the chiropractor. <laughs> Jeff's already halfway back because of his chiropractor appointment. Well, Jeff, we didn't even do a sing-along yet. I'm punctual. Row, row, row your boat gently down the river. Merrily, merrily. Okay, you're not singing. Okay, we gotta get back in a timely manner because Jeff 
has to get to his chiropractor. We're gonna try to race back. Now see, you do have a head start, this isn't fair. Now this is good cardio. Nordic Track's whole business is Girl, you've never been on a Nordic Track. Yes, I have. <laughs> oh God, I'm, I'm hitting the sand. What's wrong, what's wrong? I hit the sand beneath me. Oh, I thought you were sinking. I thought I Oh just... God, I am too. <laughs> I'm stalled. Too much junk in the trunk? Oh or... God. <laughs> I'm stuck. Oh, I love, thanks for caring, Jeff. You said we're racing. Don't mind me, I'm just stuck in the river. You'll figure it out. I was legit stuck, but I got myself out. I'm okay, don't worry about it. I got myself out, don't worry. It was harrowing there for a second there, Huckleberry. Oh, look at the cute birds. That was the most cold-hearted thing. I know, he didn't even stop. I could have sank. No, you couldn't have. You would have had to change all the graphics for the show. You'd have to get a new open. All I've kind of learned on this adventure, if we ever go anywhere and things get tough, Jeff's leaving us for dead yeah. as soon as he can. Not only did you not do anything, but you didn't even stop paddling. <laughs> you kept paddling. We were racing. I don't think he even turned around. He didn't even turn around. Well, I, I heard you, and then you said, oh, I'm out. Yeah, you heard me with screams of fear. Oh, God. Here's what I learned. Here's what I learned. Kayaking is fun, but don't ever count on Jeff to save you. <laughs> don't count on Jeff. No. No. no, no. <laughs> Went on the Mississippi River. I did. I was like, we're like Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> All 25 minutes that we were there because Jeff had to get his back fixed. That's right. <laughs> Thanks to photographer Eric. We're going to take a break. We're opening up the mailbag and more when we return right after this. <laughs> If there's one thing that you should know about me, it's when I love something, I, I have to tell everyone about it. I, I, I want everyone to have it. I w go on the streets, and I'm like, you need to have this. Well, and since I have a show, I can tell a lot of people about things that I'm obsessed with. We call it Best Thing Ever. Here we go, everybody. Yeah. So, because we're trying to do a little bit of all of our favorite segments for this season premiere, we thought we would do this one. My latest pick can help you look a little better, a little rested in the morning, even help you get rid of puffy eyes and dark circles. This was reckon, recommended to me by a friend, my friend Cindy. It's the Peter Thomas Roth Cucumber Detox Hydrogel Eye Patches. <laughs> Try it. I'm sorry, let me repeat that. It is the, no, it is the Cucumber Detox Hydrogel Eye Patches. The inner, <laughs> the longest product name in history. Uh, the energizing patches can reduce fine lines and wrinkles and hydrate the skin. Yes. According to their press release. And they're designed for all skin types. Well, we thought it would, I thought it would be great to give them a little try. Now, this is real. I really did do this. I wake up around 4.15 in the morning, and I thought, I'm going to put them on right after I wake up. So, here's this. It's uh, 4.49 in the morning. It's very, very dark in the condo. I'm the only one up. The dogs aren't even up. I'm getting a little bit of a late start, but I got to try out these new iPads. Not like an iPad, but you'll see. I put them in the refrigerator. We, we like pickles. Here they are. This is the, let's pull this out here. Peter Thomas Roth Cucumber Detox Eye Gels. I always want to say Paul Thomas Anderson, but it's Peter Thomas Roth. Let's look at these bad boys. Okay, there we go. Oh, it has a little brush or a little thing to scoop them up. That's nice. And then I think they're going to be green. Here they go. There they are. Then you use that to pull one out and put it on your face. Okay. There they are. I'm a little puffy today. 
so we're gonna leave them on for 10 to 15 minutes to see if I look 31 when this is all done. Hi, Papa. Do you notice the difference with my eyes? Do I look 31? <laughs> you might want to put a few more on. <laughs> okay, let's take them off. Oh my God, who is that? <laughs> right? Zach Efron? Thank you. <laughs> I look real pretty. <laughs> Yeah. So again, these are, <laughs> audience, I'm going to say it one more time. These are from Peter Thomas Roth. They're the Cucumber Detox Hydro Gel Eye Patches. <laughs> now, I did try them, and as you can see, I noticed a little bit of difference. I'm not kidding. I did, uh, short of having fun with Jeff, I went into the, my radio studio and looked, and I did a before and after photo, I, like a little before and after photo. It there was a noticeable difference with the puffiness around my eyes. Uh, so I like them. I thought they were great. Some of the some of those eye patches really don't deliver. These delivered. So they are my latest best thing ever, everybody. He also he also has. He also has more items uh, that we're going to be trying. There's one that gets like rid of wrinkles around your eyes within minutes, uh, temporary. So we'll be trying those. You can get that at Sephora and Target. We're going to take a break. We're opening up the mailbag when we return. Back after this. <laughs> Could you imagine? No. You saw what he did with kayaking. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Every Monday, uh, we take time to respond to your questions, your comments, your concerns, your light critiques. <laughs> it's time to open up the Jason Show mailbag. Roll it, Leo. You got me. So first up, a message from a new viewer, because now we're in Iowa, in Iowa. Uh, a DAC, is it? Adak, yeah, what a beautiful name, says, thank you for coming to our local Channel 9 so I can see the Jason Show in Iowa City, Iowa. Previously, I had to wait this to see the show when I visited my daughter in Minnesota. We are already big fans. Well, thank you. That's right. We should say... Uh, Cedar Rapids is one of our new stations, uh, or one of our new affiliates. 2 p.m., we're on at a new time now, KCRG, uh, Channel 9 in Cedar Rapids. So the ABC affiliate. We love ABC. Hello, Iowans. Hello. Uh, Lynn is next. Hi, Lynn. She says, I love that you are local with a few extensions. I will be proud to say I watched and listened to you guys way back when. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you. It means a lot. We're all very... We're all very excited. It's kind of like the little the little engine that could. Choo you know, choo. people when we debuted eight years ago, they were like, "What is this?" They're uh, still like, what "Well, is they this? are still like that." But I mean, <laughs> but yeah, we're oh yeah. I mean, we did just have three employees dressed as unicorns run around our parking lot. So there is that. Uh, Cindy is next. Hi, Cindy. She says, "Watching from Washington State. I love the show. Hoping Kendall has her baby September 14th. That's my birthday. Yeah." <laughs> That's a great guess. That is a great guess, actually. Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> the studio guess. audience that we were talking during the break were like, it would be great if you gave birth in our last segment today. I mean, you know, no pressure. It's like Animal Planet up That's here. That's right. <laughs> Next, comments on a moment that happened in the Jason Show office. Now, last week, we noticed, or well, Jeff noticed, that I was wearing a toe spacer between my big toe and second toe, which gave Jeff a lot of enjoyment. Well, we shared the video video on our socials and got several comments. <laughs> Deanna says, hi, Jason, I would call your primary caregiver so they can run labs to check for gout. Oh, thank you. <laughs> nothing like, nothing like gout talk in the morning. That's right. Okay. And not to be outdone by her, crazy grandma 15 says, could be gout in your big toe. Thank you. <laughs> I have been tested. It's not that. It's just I'm 
getting I'm getting old. Anyway, Gouch. finally more comments on my friends uh, from Orlando that I call the Brits. Uh, these episodes aired during our state fair. Joe and Beth are their names. They work at the uh, they work at the Rose and Crown at Epcot Center, and they visited us here in Minnesota and went to our Minnesota uh, state fair. They got to milk a cow. They worked the dairy booth. Well, Janet writes the girls from England are so cute and sweet. Jason, you made their trip to the fair a truly memorable experience they are so lucky to have you guys as friends and you as theirs and G yeah let me no 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 let me tell you we are the lucky ones they're just joy personified and GC on YouTube had a question though did the girls get the scotch eggs on a stick because they they really wanted those they said if we do all of this stuff can we get a scotch egg they did and I will tell you the Brits said and they've had really good authentic scotch eggs they said the state fair scotch eggs mm -hmm. were some of the best they've ever had in their life uh, yeah yeah look it up so and i always like to promote them because they were nice enough to to be goofy with us for a day um this is probably you know their only trip to the fair if you are watching from orlando and you visit and you go to walt disney world they work at the rose and crown at epcot center in uh, i call it fake britain uh <laughs> in the uk pavilion and joe and beth are their names tip them well uh and be very nice to them because as they say they're nice girls they call they they when Colin and I met them all we did was ask them how their day was mm -hmm. and we came in a second time and Beth looked at Joe and goes those are the nice boys those are the nice boys <laughs> so I love you girls and I can't wait to see you soon you can stay connected with our show on social media especially all you new folks check us out on Twitter Facebook TikTok, and Instagram at Jason show TV and our personal accounts as well uh, Jason Matheson and Kendall Mark because then you can keep track of Kendall mm -hmm. I'm just glad oh really quick I just want to say this authentically before we go uh -oh. I, I we've been joking about you giving birth before yeah. the season premiere uh -huh. I am just really sincerely glad that all <laughs> of our new people got to meet you <laughs> all in all of our show. yeah I would have hated <laughs> I would have hated for this show to debut in all these new cities and them not get not to meet you right away. <laughs> Come so. December, who's that lady? <laughs> <laughs> yes. We'll be right back, back after this. Stay with us. <laughs> who's that? She's been gone. I know you've seen them over the past few weeks, all those pictures of kids going back to school uh, on filled social media if you went on Facebook on Monday. So in honor of our season premiere, I mean, we're kind of going back to school. Mm -hmm. We present our Jason Show staff back to school pictures. Okay, so here's, uh, here's me right there. There's mine, Aww. yes. 40, 49. Yeah, I'm 49. Okay, there we go. So here's nice. Kendall. Oh. <laughs> so pregnant. And audience, you'll get to know this. That's the patented Kendall pose sure right there. Is. Okay, here's executive producer Jeff, our leader. <laughs> With his legendary Debbie Downer expression. Here's uh, director Leo, who directs our show. Um, we're not sure if Leo's directing the show or uh, sh uh, showing up for state prison, but it's... Uh, Hiding yeah. the bodies somewhere. And, and then finally, photographer Eric. Oh there we go. <laughs> we'll be right back. Back in a moment. <laughs> Into the top of the show, ESPN does this, Fox Sports. Let's do an instant replay of our mascot race. As you can see, the clear runner was the Bjornicorn. Uh, but there is, the audience and I discovered controversy, didn't we, audience? We did. Uh, the pink and the black unicorn is claiming Bjornicorn cheat, cheated. And uh, did not gallop like they were supposed to. So 
We're going to have uh, Fox Sports uh, review the footage, and we may have a rematch uh, in a future episode. Yeah. Joking controversy. Get, get, yeah. Tomorrow, I'm talking live to Jeff Timmons from 98 Degrees. We'll ask about those boy band Super Bowl rumors floating around. But right now, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you're a kid watching and you're being bullied, you go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you you're doing it wrong. Mom